Hi everyone, my name is King Ivy and this is Introduction to IDEA Data Analysis by Caseware. So this is the third lesson in the series of eight lessons covering the Introduction to IDEA Data Analysis software. In this lesson, we'll be using three data sets that can be found in this Dropbox link, uh, and I'll also include them in the description below. So let's get to this. So we're going to open up the IDEA software. Again, I'm using version 9.1, and we're going to open up a macro since I've already imported this data before. And what we're going to do is, since I've already imported this data already, I'm just going to click this play button, and then it's going to import three files that I need. So it's going to import, it's already imported country admissions, customer database, outstanding receivables. So what we're going to do next is we're going to go to this analysis ribbon and we're really going to focus on this categorized menus. So we're going to be covering summarization, aging, stratification, and we're going to do a pivot table, but I find it's not as interesting of a view. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to country admissions and what the question that you may be asking is, okay, I see that there's country data and I see that's over 20 years and the annual carbon emission. Maybe I want to assess what's the carbon emission per country over this 20 year time period. So one way to tackle that problem is using a summarization. It's going to ask you, what do you want to summarize by? In this case, I'm interested in summarizing by country. What, what do I want to total? In this case, I want to total carbon. And you can use quick summarization. And really what that does is that it blanks this all out. And it's basically just going to do sum. But in this case, I'm going to include all the analysis just because I'm interested and curious about it. I'm going to include the include percentage in output. So this is going to be the percentage of total number of records, uh, percentage of total. So really, really great analysis that you can pull right away. So you'll see in a matter of a minute, I'm able to do analysis such as what's Albania. They have 20 records, which makes sense, 20 country, 20 years. Uh, the total carbon sum, the average, the carbon max for, for the over that time period, the variance and standard deviation. So again, this can help with any statistical models. But again, you can also take a look at, you'll see that, for example, China and the United States represent over half the carbon emission during that 20 year time period. So within a minute, you're able to do this quick analysis and gather some really great insight. So the next thing that we're gonna to go to is outstanding receivables, and we're gonna be focusing on this aging function. And really with aging, as you can guess, you need, a, you need a date field. In this case, we have transaction date. So that's awesome. So we click on aging, and it's gonna ask you what's your as of date. So maybe this is the end of the month. So we're going to go April 30th. Any criteria? So this, if you were to look only for particular customers, particular countries, in this case, we're going to have none. Uh, aging field to use. Again, you have to use a date. Amount field to total. So in this case, we want a total amount. And then you can use your intervals by 30 days, months, or days, months, years. Uh, we're going to generate a detailed aging database. We're not going to generate a key summary database because again, this is where if you would have had transaction data, multiple transaction data for each customer, you may want to may evaluate, evaluate it this way. But in case, this case, we only have one transaction per customer and we're going to create a results table. So we're going to click OK. And you see really quickly that, uh, for example, there's a large amount of the data or customers that have outstanding receivables between 61 and 90 days, as it represents 40% uh, of the total and 41% of the total number of records. So you can see that it's, it is pretty significant. So that allows you to contact those customers. And if we want to look at them, we can press extraction and maybe we want to call this uh, customers uh, late AR. Click right there. We can export this and investigate those particular customers. So it's, it's great. We can go to this customer database, and next thing we want to do is this stratification. Maybe in this instance, what we want to find out is we have this credit limit column. Maybe we want to figure out how many of our customers are in this 
have, are in these various buckets of credit. So you can see it goes anywhere from 2,000 to 3.9 million. Maybe we want to find out, okay, how many customers are between zero and 100,000, between 100,000 and 200,000, um, etc. So in this case, we're going to use a stratification field. Click on yes. And we're going to again stratify by this credit limit. And we're going to start our lower bound at zero. And we're going to go in intervals of 100,000. And it's very simple. You can create these buckets. So this bucket, bucket number two, is going to be credit customers with credit limits between 100,000 and 200,000. And we're going to go up to a million. So between zero and a million. And what this is going to be is if there are any customers with a negative credit limit or a credit limit greater than a million, they're going to be part of the upper and lower bound. And you'll see that in a second. So we're going to create, we're going to create a database. We're going to include the intervals. And we're going to leave the names as is. And we're also going to total on the credit limit. So you'll see we'll have this really great view and really great insight. So you'll see it virtually all your customers, 94.43%, uh, have between a credit limit of zero and 100,000. But they, are, in fact, only actually make up 21%, 20, 21, 22% of the actual total credit limit available. And if we go down here, you'll see lower exception. This would have been customers with negative credit limits and upper exception, which is greater than a million. You'll see that there's only four of them. They only make up 1.17% of the total population, but you'll see that their credit limits make up 66%. So maybe we want to take a closer look at the, these customers. So we'll say large credit limit customers. So we'll click here. Maybe we want to specially advertise to these customers because they're 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 important, they spend a lot of money, or maybe we want to reevaluate should we be giving them a credit lim limit so high? So some really good analysis that you can perform there. And it, if we want to stratify, or if we want to create a pivot table, this is very similar to Excel. Uh, so we click on pivot table, and we'll just call it pivot table. And what we will want to do is create our columns and our rows. So in this case, maybe we want to go by status, for example, in the columns. And maybe we want to go by country. And then we want to total the credit limits. So you can see, if you're interested, uh, the various the various views that you can have. In this case, you can summarize, you can create averages, maximums. It's very similar to Excel, so I don't use this this view that often, but it is does provide you some some unique insights. So again, that's that's all we're going to cover for this lesson. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below, and I uh, hope to hope to hear from you again. Thank you.